after finally jumping on the video doorbell bandwagon earlier this year, my wife and I have been considering adding some security cameras to the exterior of our home. Since we chose to go with the Ring Pro 2 video doorbell, we decided to stay in the Ring ecosystem and purchase this three-pack of Ring stick-up cameras at our local Costco. I'm guessing the biggest question you have about these cameras is what the video and audio quality is like. So let's take a look at that first, and then we'll go into what all comes in the box, what the installation process is like, and some of the main features that these cameras support. The stick-up cams are 1080p Full HD cameras, so the image quality is pretty good. Would I like it to be even better? Yeah, sure I would. As you can see in this clip overlooking my driveway, overall the image looks really nice. When I'm standing on the sidewalk about 30 feet away from the face of my garage though, there isn't much detail that can be seen of my face. As I walk closer, things do improve, but right here I'm standing about 15 feet away from the garage and you still can't really make out my facial features. It isn't until I'm about 5 feet away from the face of my garage that you can finally get a decent look. That being said, I do recognize that this is just a fact of life when it comes to cameras in general. Without a telephoto lens or something, the further away a subject is from the camera, the less detail you're going to be able to see. This particular camera is mounted about 10 feet off the ground on the front of my garage and overall offers a good field of view and a nice 1080p image. The night vision feature on the stick-up cam is pretty good in my opinion. Not great, but good. Each camera has a pair of infrared emitters on them, which do a solid job illuminating things so you can see what's going on in the dark. Here I am walking around in my driveway with our exterior garage lights turned off, and the camera has no problem at all seeing what's going on. You can make a good thing even better though. To give you an example, I turned our exterior garage lights on to see what kind of a difference it would make. As you can see, having some additional light does help. With our exterior lights on, the image looks noticeably sharper and allows more detail to be seen. The stick-up cams also capture audio. And as you'd expect, the closer someone is to the camera, the better the audio quality becomes. Uh, this is uh, just a little test of the audio. Uh, right now I'm standing about 30 feet away. Here I am now standing about 15 feet away. I'm talking uh, about the same amount of loudness as I was when I was down about 30 feet away. And, but now let's move a little closer. And uh, here I am about five feet away from my garage. And you should be able to hear me the best right here. Um, but uh, yeah, there we go. That's a little example of the audio of the Ring Stick-Up Cam. These cameras have a two-way talk feature as well that allows you to talk to someone that may be passing or stopping by. Hey, I'm watching you guys. Hope you have a nice day. As for what all came in the box after purchasing our Ring Stick-Up cams, on top are the three cameras. Beneath those are three ceiling mounts with all the screws and stuff you need to mount them somewhere in or on your home. And in this final little box we have the batteries to power our cameras, some more mounting hardware, the USB cables for charging the batteries, this handy little screwdriver that has both a security Torx and Phillips head bit on it, uh, you just flip it around like so. And last but not least, a masonry drill bit in case you happen to be installing your cameras into concrete, brick, or stucco. Before you can do anything with your stick-up cams, the first thing you need to do is charge the batteries. So I removed the twisty ties off all the charging cords, and for the first time in a long time, I was able to use a little USB power brick I got several years ago. It didn't say anything about the charging time in the instructions, but using my little power brick thing that has a max output of 5 volts, it took somewhere in the neighborhood of 7 or 8 hours to fully charge all the batteries simultaneously. One of the neat features of the Ring Stick-Up Cam is its versatility when it comes to mounting it. You can leave the mount connected as a base to use indoors and place it on a table or a shelf or something. Or you can unscrew this mount from the bottom like so, 
remove the silicone plug here on the back and then attach the mount to the back of the camera, allowing you to mount it on a wall. The last option is to use the ceiling mount. It also attaches to the back of the camera housing, but requires the use of a different screw which is included with the ceiling mount hardware. The screw for the stock mount is a little longer than this one, so it doesn't work quite right with the ceiling mount. Once the batteries had fully charged, I twisted off the bottom cover of the stick-up cam, inserted one of the batteries, the camera powered on, and I was greeted with this message. Welcome to Ring. Follow the instructions in the Ring app to continue. For this, you'll need to have the Ring app installed on your smartphone or tablet and have already set up your Ring account. Uh, once in the Ring app, you'll want to tap on the menu icon at the top left of the screen. Then tap on set up a device, then security cameras, and now we need to scan the QR code on the bottom of our stick up camera. I then put the bottom cover back onto the camera and continued with the setup. You select the address where you'll be installing your camera, click continue, and it'll then ask if you're installing your camera indoors or outdoors. I'm putting mine outside, and now it wants us to give our camera a name. I like to name my cameras based on the area they cover. So after naming your camera, it wants to know if you have a wired or battery powered camera. Uh, these are battery powered, so we'll tap that. And now the app is telling us to fully charge the battery. I've already charged my battery, so I can tap continue. Uh, since I put the battery in before starting all this, my camera is already powered up, so at this screen I can tap on stick up cam is on, and then tap on the light is flashing blue, because it is, and has been for the past several minutes. Tap on got it, and then connect. Once your phone has connected to the camera, it will ask to connect to your Wi-Fi network. Tap on your network, and the camera will then connect to your Wi-Fi. Once that's done, you just follow the prompts to finish setting your camera up. I skipped through most of this stuff because I don't plan on using most of the feature these prompts are for, and I just wanted to get my camera up and running so I could take it outside and position it where we wanted it. One of the things I like about these cameras being battery powered and therefore completely wireless is they allowed us to go to different places around our house where we thought that we'd like to have our cameras and use the live video feed on my phone to help us position it to get the best view. And then of course there's the obvious advantage of not having to run power or network cables to the cameras. They really are about as hassle free as you can get when it comes to installing them. The downside of them being battery powered is I'm eventually going to have to climb up on a ladder again, take the cameras down, or at the very least remove the batteries, charge them up, then put them back in. Maybe I should buy a spare set of batteries so all I have to do is swap them out. As for how long the charge on a battery will last, according to Ring it lasts about 1000 activations. So let's say you're recording 10 motion events a day. Um, that means it'll last around uh, 100 days or so. But of course, that all depends on how many activations you have each day. Based on this 1000 activations number though, I would estimate it should last somewhere around 2 or 3 months. As for the physical installation process, I don't know how Ring could make it much simpler. Once you know where you want to install your camera at, you remove the mounting bracket by sliding it down and off the mount like so. You mark the two holes on either side, then pilot some holes for the mounting screws to go into. I used a 1 16th inch drill bit for this. You then use the screws included with the stick up cam to secure the mounting bracket to the wall, then slide the camera mount onto the bracket, install the security screw, and all that's left to do is adjust the camera so it's looking at what you want it to look at. Jumping back into the app, there's a lot of different options here for our cameras. This video is already getting kind of long, so I'm not going to go over everything here, but just highlight a few of the features I think are the most interesting. First, let's go into Live View. Here we have several different buttons we can play with. There's the speaker icon here that allows us to hear what the camera hears, and then the microphone button that allows us to talk to people that are near that camera. 
The other button on the bottom right here says siren off. Uh, if you tap that, it will then activate a siren that will play for 30 seconds or until you turn it off. Uh, kind of a fun little feature. One of the most useful settings, in my opinion, is here in motion settings. Here we can change the motion sensitivity, turn people only mode on and off, uh, but the feature I want to look at is the edit motion zones here at the top. Here you can select these pick points to highlight the area you want motion to be detected in. This way you can monitor your front yard without getting an alert every time a car drives by or when your neighbors are out walking their dog or something. Linked devices is one that I'm not currently using, but I do think is interesting. This allows you to have other cameras turn on and record simultaneously if one camera detects motion, giving you multiple angles whenever a motion event occurs. Motion snooze is a useful one if you're going to be doing stuff outside and don't want to keep getting alerts every time your camera sees you. You can choose to snooze notifications from 30 minutes up to 4 hours. You can do this for each camera individually, or you can snooze all your cameras simultaneously by tapping the little moon icon here at the main dashboard and selecting your desired amount of snooze time. The last thing I want to highlight is under device settings in video settings. Here you can change the length of your recordings, turn the infrared lights for night vision on or off, uh, as well as enable color night vision. Color night vision is a cool little option to have if you have a fair amount of ambient light. It combines the infrared and visible light to give you a color video rather than just black and white. This option does deplete your battery more rapidly though, so that's something to take into consideration before you enable it. Overall, I'm quite happy with our purchase of the Ring Stick Up cameras. I like how easy the Ring app is to use. It has a lot of options available so you can customize your camera system just the way you want it. Setting up and installing the stick-up cams, I, I don't know how it could be any easier. While I'm not looking forward to having to remove and recharge the batteries, I feel the trade-off of not having to run any wires is totally worth it. Also, being able to view the video live to help us find the best place to mount them to our house was super useful and is something you really can only do with a wireless setup. Yeah, I do wish the video quality was better, but at the same time, I recognize higher resolution cameras are going to cost more than these. And all things considered, the video quality is good and the overall experience is pretty great.